Hi, I'm Joe. Uh, you may remember me from the craft of Lanyard. This is my Caddy Maxi Mark II. So this is uh, my Caddy Maxi. Um, I downsized from a crafter because I needed something that I'd be able to use as both a car and a van and a camper van. Um, and also wanted something that was a bit more practical for day-to-day -day use. Um, right, starting in the kitchen, um, it has a sink here with a cold water tap and one hob burner. There's a gas locker um, beneath in the cabinet here, which uh, is just through this little door. There's also an electric cool box here, which is a 21 litre cool box, which just slides out on a runner all the way out. So you can either access the cool box there, or you can pull the whole thing out and just use it as a day-to-day -day cool box and then that just goes back in there. And that one, it actually wires into both the 240 volt mains if you're hooked up, um, but it also has a 12 volt connection too, so that will just run off the leisure battery. The leisure battery is stored behind the passenger seat in what would be a footwell underneath this part of the floor. Um, so I have my electric unit here um, and my inverter on this side, so they're both as close to the battery as possible. Um, so with this, it controls um, the 12 volt system, but it also has the metric um, hookup comes from the other side of the van to this, um, and the inverter um, is quite close to that too. You can isolate all of the different lights from here. So I have three levels of lighting. I have um, the first is underneath the main cabinet, the second uh, underneath the top shelves, and then I've got the just the ceiling lights as well. Um, I even have just the old vehicle light here too. So if you open up the, uh, any of the doors at night and you haven't got the consumer unit on, it's quite handy having a light that will come on with the doors. I've also, um, I've got quite a lot of electrics in here for quite a small van, um, but it's, uh, it's handy to have USB chargers um, and uh, 240 volt sockets there if you need them. Um, otherwise, the only other thing on the electrics is uh, the water pump. Um, which is a submersible water pump that comes from a 23 litre water tank behind the sink. So with this bed, um, I decided to go for a central bench seat that could extend out to become a full six foot length bed. Um, the reason I did this because I wanted to be able to remove the whole thing if I wanted uh, to use this whole space um, for a van. Um, and it's also quite nice to be able to just sit here and look out either side. The bed works by pulling out these two extensions. Comes out that side. Um, I then put an inflatable mattress on the top of this. Um, there's a slight dip here, which you can either put in foam, but with most mattresses, they're hard enough to be able to just sort of go straight over the top. It also means that once the mattress is up here, you've got this whole um, space as a bed um, and somewhere to put your, your phone and your keys. This is uh, the table during the day. So you can take out the table, um, put away the bed, and then you've got a seat with a table on either side as well. So this is your table. And then if I then you have a full camping setup as well. I also made it like this um, so that this um, this central piece belt bolts in four places, um, but the whole thing can move right back to the back of the van. Um, and although you wouldn't be able to use it as a bed, you could have a lot more space here and you could have the table on this section as well um, instead. Um, just depending on how you wanted to use the van, you might want to just have a tent to sleep in instead and have slightly more of a spacious uh, living area in the van. So um, this door here um, is a bit unique because it only opens halfway when you have the seat inside it. Um, I wanted to have some access when the seat was in place. 
um, just so you can get things from that side of the van. Um, but when this bench seat is either taken out or fixed in the rear position, then you can obviously open this whole cupboard door out as well. The drawers are held in place by marine catches, um, just there, so that they don't swing out when you go around the corners. Um, they're also on runners that are supported by um, hanging from the surface itself rather than on the main frame, which allows me to make the frame a lot lighter because it doesn't have to be reinforced as a whole framework. Um, in fact, most of this whole cabinet is literally just held in place by three brackets that hold it to the chassis of the van. These go back in um, again because they're keyboard runners um, for a computer keyboard, so they're held in place by um, quite strong um, fixings as well. So all, all of these drawers extend back right to the full uh, width of the cabinet. Um, so you've got one going all the way um, along right to the back. So they're all, I think, 45 centimetres deep. Um, which is um, pretty good storage for around this size. So this is my little cupboard here. Um, I made my own catches as well because I couldn't find any that quite suited um, the style of my uh, all the rest of um, the van. So I have the three shelves of um, birch plywood just for general storage um, and below them I've got a, just a laptop drawer which I just use because um, laptops often um, slide around all over the place and also this is quite nice if you're just um, lying back in your bed then you can just prop your laptop up and then watch a film from there and then it can just stow away neatly when you've finished. Down here we've got the main cupboard um, which at the moment just opens into one big central cupboard. I haven't divided that up but you could do if you wanted but it extends right to the back um, to the side of the van. So this is uh, the back of my kitchen area. Um, this is where the cool box plugs in. It's got um, the 12 volt plug there and the mains um, plug there. And um, it'll recognize whether you're plugged into the mains and then take the current from there instead so it doesn't drain the leisure battery. Also got um, the 23 litre water carrier here, which just unstraps. That just pulls out so you can twist it out there and take the whole can away if you want to fill up and then it just um, goes back in there and you can strap it down and fix it properly. So the um, 240 volt mains hookup is underneath the van here um, and it's just bolted to the chassis itself um, so that when you're on a campsite you can hook up um, without tripping over the cable at the front of uh, the van but it's also quite neat so you don't have to cut a hole in the side of your van or show other people that you're a camper van at all. It's, um, otherwise when all the doors are shut it looks just like a regular panel van. The leisure battery is charged um, by a um, voltage sensitive relay um, which comes straight from the vehicle battery um, and to the leisure battery. Um, I don't actually put the vehicle battery directly connected to the consumer unit in case it sort of drains it by mistake. Otherwise, it uh, can be charged by the mains inlet. So it has a battery charger in the consumer unit as well. So the leisure battery is uh, stored behind the passenger seat. And then there's just a footwell space where you could probably fit two batteries if you wanted. I hope you enjoyed that content. Um, if you hadn't noticed, we do have an ebook that we sell, uh, and the link is just in the description. Uh, it contains 160 pages crammed full of practical advice, walkthrough information, electronic schematics, and part lists, which will make your job a lot easier for doing a van conversion, and it will save you time and money. Like we're pretty confident that this ebook is useful to you because if you don't, for any reason, you don't like it, you don't find it useful, you can literally just drop, drop us an email, and we'll give you a refund, no questions asked. I really believe that anyone, regardless of their experience, can make a half decent fan conversion. Thanks for watching, we really appreciate you watching our content and we put a lot of effort to make it interesting, informative and find those cool projects that feature on our channel. Consider subscribing, leave a comment and we'll see you next week.